Welcome to Shadows of Prophecy, a D&D real play podcast following the ill-omened web of lives, whispered by the void, their names repeated in the darkness. Shadows of Prophecy is a Dungeons and Dragons podcast with violent themes and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. With us today to traverse through adventures of goopy, gooey pus and lots and lots of squishy, stretchy tendrils, we have myself, Timothy, as our ambivalent keeper of cats. Oh, right, that's me. Hi, I'm Dan, and I am playing the mostly human, a little bit elf, scholar and rogue, and double dash daddy, Ren. I dash a lot. Noise. Yeah, I'm very dashing. Uh, my name oh. is... <laughs> <laughs> so you agree, I'm the cute one. Oh, yeah. I thought, yeah, we established that. I think we all agree, I'm the cute one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Chris, I'm playing a Tiefen cleric who is a divine caster and route to disaster, Salvador Saros. Oh! <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Russell, I'm playing the half orc barbarian, Uppery Uppies, Upperland Johansberg. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Kendrick, and I'm playing the half elf warlock, Yonsei Bay, who is giving Haro a zero out of five stars on D&D Yelp. Tough fair. crowd. That's, That's fair. I mean, like, can you give a zero? Doesn't it have to be at least a one. Uh, Yasei's found a way. <laughs> I found a way to make it zero. <laughs> Last time on Shadows of Prophecy, through the winding streets of the city, the party raced to the Warrens. Screams, crashes, fire, and crumbling stone, the city of Harrow lay waste as the party encounters more and more monsters struggling to flee their sticky grip and forced to rain a flurry of attacks to finally escape through Sal's obscuring fog cloud. Down and down the wall, they descend into an overrun lower city and then into an infested warrens, sinews, veins, and a thick, pulsating umbilical cord weave through the maze of the warrens and into the tavern. Through a now uncovered passage, they find the sultry Aquila and beefcake Bran, who equip them with fancy new shinies and information on their foe. As they set off after a hopefully kidnapped, not dead, Vladlin, they step into the tunnel. Join us as we enter the Shadows of Prophecy. Act 1, In the Shadows. Chapter 13, Broken Glass. All right. So you all are standing here about to step into this tunnel. How do you proceed? I feel like we have a time crunch because he could be dead. So we should go quickly. All right, caution to the wind. Yeah. Hey, torch, yeah. It, torch is lit. Yeah. Up he runs in. A light torch. All right. So as Upri jumps into the tunnel, she begins clambering over the cords of sinew. Oh. Ducking, stepping over, sidestepping the weaving path forward. And the tunnel veers to the left, then to the right. And then it opens into a larger chamber. The point of egress from this room is at first obscured. You examine the walls, your attention first drawn to the bodies. Oh. One after the other, rows and columns of bodies attached to the wall, their faces replaced by that 
of the tenderly face fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but their human forms now limp and dripping with purple ooze. Uh, are they sleeping? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> So we don't see any way out of this chamber yet? No. It seems to open, but the corners are bundles of cords. Uh. Everything is covered in layers and layers of visceral red tendrils. Uh, ideas? Hack, hack and slash? Theoretically, there would be a doorway in, like, the center of these walls and probably not at the corners. I mean, we don't know what the architect had in mind when they were building the secret tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, this well, this is the monster-made tunnel, That's right? The burrow yeah. The tunnel. yeah. So we just hack through, I guess. I'm not really... I don't really have anything to hack, so I'm going to just squish. So don't I'll let a, y'all do it. Don't you have a hand axe? Yeah, she's taking a rest. She's tired. Oh, yeah. Oh can't just use the the <laughs> bladed side of it. Yeah, the blades, it's just okay. Yeah. Oh, I'll pass you my, my other short sword. Damn it. <laughs> Am I proficient in short sword? I'm sure you are. It's a simple <laughs> weapon. Oh, okay. And I get to hack it. I will take the right side wall from where right. we came in. So you are going to exit the tunnel into the room, and you're going to make your way to the right. Oh, I thought we were in the room already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you step out into the room, you hear the squish beneath your feet. Squish, 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 splat. <laughs> I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Great. Oh. Nine. As you step down into the floor, it's it bursts beneath you. You drop an extra three inches as you are sprayed with an acidic goo. You take seven acid damage. What? Okay. And as you look down, you see this black, tenderly spindle, a cluster of what you had originally thought of as veins of this living structure and then you feel it building in the back of your mind in the base of the skull where the spinal column meets your brain this resonance vibrating and building it builds to this shrill high pitch and you all hear it. It is pinging, stabbing the back of your neck. And as you look around the chamber, you see the whole chamber is vibrating with this resonance. Ow. Ow. Oh. Can I grab him to yank him back out of the room? Yeah. So you grab Ren and pull him back into the tunnel. We still vibrating? Yes, everything's still vibrating. It continues to vibrate for a couple more seconds and then stops. Yeah, anyone gonna need way to make a lot of fire? Oh, I do have... Did I take that spell? No, I, d I was gonna take that fire spell. But I do have these oil flasks that I picked up from the room. We could probably light them on fire. Oh, give him a little toss. It's probably not going to cover the entirety of this room. It's kind of limited a AOE. Oh, maybe I can take the flasks and just do a line around the outside of the room real quick and double back. Then we light it and watch it go. Yeah, watch your step. Oh, I'm quite limber. Is this what you want to attempt doing? Yeah, I think I could take a splash or two. It'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, I don't have... Yeah, it'll be fine. You have resistance to this. No. Yeah, it is right, difficult me... terrain, so you'll be moving slowly around the room. 
a speed of 15 feet per six seconds. All right, I'm going to start doing this while y'all think of a real plan. All right, give me. Okay, yeah, I give him so you're oil. basically at a walking pace. Perfect. Yeah, I'll I give you... Try to make my way. Two of the oil flasks. Can you give me a perception check as you were doing this task? Ooh, it's plus five now. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's a natural one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and the whole room begins to sing. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna fucking die. Ooh, ah. ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. <clears throat> not really. That is not what happens. That, this is the wrong campaign for that. Yeah. Way too playful. Uh, rain it back in, everyone. Because immediately, as Upri sets off around the perimeter of the room, splat. Stumble, 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 splat. Stumble, 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 splat. Fuck, I'm barefoot. <laughs> and that resonance that. again sets off an alarm throughout the chamber. Everything is is vibrating. Everything is ringing. That feeling in the back of your head is like somebody took an ice pick to your skull. And it's just over and over and over and over again, pounding into the back of your skull. Upri, you need to make three successive dexterity saving rolls. Oh, they're against, are they against things I can see? No, because your perception <laughs> failed. Oh, right. Oh, that's a 14 on the first one. Fail. Four acid damage. Ah, ooh. That's a <laughs> three on the base. <laughs> Fail. Three acid damage. That's a six. <laughs> and another fail. Five acid damage. <laughs> this ain't so bad. It's exfoliating. <laughs> it's like a chemical peel. <laughs> you Think of a plan. See, <laughs> <laughs> your like furs are like burning. Chunks of it is falling off. You have like burn marks up your legs. Do you continue on? I mean, you probably... Yeah. Do you want me to... Because I could probably shoot these things from the doorway without stepping on them. Oh, they're things we can see? No. Well, uh, well, they're I, like pots in the ground. Oh, I was thinking we could shoot things off the wall. Yeah. So, like, the floor is covered in viscera. There's, like, sinews and goop and just tons and tons of these black veins running through. You see the umbilical cord has now branched off in several directions. Everything is a tangled mess. You can spot out some of these spindles throughout the room, but they are everywhere, Mm -hmm. and some of them are tucked beneath layers of spindle. Yeah, I accept my duty as the bulky (laughs) one. All right, let's keep going. You probably have very bad calluses, so it probably won't be that painful. Yeah, like I said, it's like a chemical pee. <laughs> Your feet will be very soft after this. Yeah, hopefully not smooth to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you continue on. Uh, Give there's... me another perception check. Ha <laughs> ha! 18. 18. Okay, so now you slow your pace. You begin moving... Almost glacially, stepping over cord, checking each position as you are about to set your foot down. And the rest of you watch as Upri begins to make her way around the room, dribbling oil as she goes. How far do I make it? You make your way after... 10, 15 minutes around the room. Oh. And you reconnect with the party. Your task complete. Whew. All right. Look at my skin. It's like soft as a baby. <laughs> oh, Do you want there, any... My flesh is a little burned. Yeah. Do you want any, like, ointment or anything for that? 
Nah, that could help. I'm okay. good for right now. Right. Maybe save it for an emergency. That's fair. Scars build character, you know. Uh, anyone got a, a light? Oh, right. You're torch. <laughs> you're holding a torch. <laughs> well, go on. Scrap. Give me yeah. a... I'll, I'll light the line of oil that we made. All right. That up we made. So you put the torch to the oil. And a little chunk of it takes a light. The flame starts to build and you see that the the sinews start to melt as the tension snaps and they fling back against the wall. Oh, everybody step back. Everybody step back. You don't want to get out of the splash zone. (laughs) It then begins to die out before catching the next section. And then that puddle of oil builds and lights and burns a chunk of the fleshy wall and begins to sputter. And I'm going to roll a d20 to determine how well this makes its way around the room. I was real careful after the first three or four misdaps. 11. So with an 11, it is successful. It slowly makes its way, little clump of fire at a time, around the room, melting away sections of the wall. Occasionally triggering the spindles, that ice pick feeling in the back of your head, pounding and pounding and pounding, the room vibrating and aggravating those snappings of the cord even further. And it slowly makes its way around. And that is when you hear somewhere on the other side of the wall there are movements. Chitterings. I'm gonna take my bow out. Not out. As it slowly reveals a tunnel to the right of the room that goes deeper into a cavern system. That one seemingly empty. The noise is coming from the left. And as the fire approaches that region, you see as the sinews snap away, slowly revealing the legs of creatures standing on the other side. You may and everybody roll initiative. I'd like to like hold my, I don't know why I'm rolling two dice. Like, hold my arrow until they just peek out. 15. Oh, boy oh. 21. 11. 10. All right, so you loose an arrow, Ren. Yes, I'm going to aim at the... You said there were how many legs? Yeah, so you see a pair of legs. Just uh, single pair of legs. Can I see the body of the legs? As the cords are snapping and you are waiting for your opportunity to attack, you see slowly a fleshy purple, grayish purple face with tendrils hanging down its chest. That's all I need. Yep. I'm going to loose an arrow. Does a 19 hit? A 19 does hit. Yes! Oh, sorry, 18. It was an 18, not a 19. Okay, that still hits. Okay. Um, for those listening at home, uh, we leveled up and I picked up the assassin archetype. So because it's a surprise round, I automatically crit. So sorry. Oh, shit. Yes. So that's two of those. There's two of those. So I roll 8d6. <laughs> Because it's, it's two for my normal, two for my critical analysis, and then 
four d6 for the sneak attack because it's doubled. All right. And hold on while I math. My gosh. So sorry. So as you're like waiting for, because this creature is waiting for the tendrils to clear as well. It's watching the fire burn away the fleshy walls. And you have your bow drawn, aiming, waiting for the right moment. And you loose the arrow and it goes straight through the facial body of the creature where you believe its core organs to exist. As the arrow pierces through, the whole form of the creature kind of crumples in a bit as it's taken aback and you watch as the grayish purple pus begins to pull out around the arrow, just pouring as its body starts to slowly deflate. All right, Ren, it is the top of initiative order. Your turn. Does this count as another turn so I can sneak attack again? It is a new round. Why would you have sneak attack again? Because as an assassin, I get advantage on all creatures that I go before. Mm. In the first round. Only in the first round. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I think mechanically that's true. Okay. So you just whip two arrows quickly before it can react. Uh, That is a... That one's a a dirty 20. That'll hit. Okay, let's not crit this time. Sad for me, but that's okay. That is, that's a cock dice. I'll roll that again. Um, 10, 7, plus 8, 25 piercing damage. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> one level. <laughs> one level really Makes me really strong on the it. first turn. Uh, <laughs> I guess this is what you're good at now. Um, it is struggling. You see that as those arrows make impact and its body begins to slowly deflate, it's like its stature has completely crumpled in on itself. And you see the like pus oozing out. It's kind of swaying and stumbling to come to grips with what has just happened. And it is Yonsei's turn. All right. So what I am going to do is... I'm going to look at the ring that I semi-stole and put my hand over it and to sense the magic that's in it. I'm going to kiss the ring and then automatically I feel it transform from the roaring lion to the proud ram. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I'm just going to point it at the face fucker that has been hit twice by Ren, and then I'm just going to shoot a blast at it. And this is the the ring of the ram. The ring produces a spectral ram head and makes its attack roll with seven plus bonus, so. So make an attack roll, add seven. That's gonna be 11, so it does not. Hit. 11 is gonna miss. So you see a spectral ram miss out of the ring and immediately charge off in the direction towards the creature but unfortunately it's gonna just get stuck in the viscera and smash into the wall nearby the tunnel Jan what the fuck was that that? excuse me (laughs) where'd you get that from that 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 was a that was a tester that was a tester (laughs) um and I guess with my bonus action since I've done nothing I am going to... Misty Step. <laughs> <laughs> do it again, them. do it again. Yeah. I'm not going to Misty Step, but I am going to Hex. So as a bonus action, you can deal plus four psychic damage to... So you would need to... No, I think it's automatic. You add a Hex 
for any subsequent attacks. Oh, so, so if I you land an attack on it to do damage, you add an additional damage dealt to it. All right, then never mind. Then I cannot do anything. I am still learning. You can hex it this round, and then that will take an effect next time you do damage to it. All right, then I will hex it now. All right. Well, the creature finally recovers from the initial attacks. No. And it locks eyes with you, Ren. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you see a ray of psionic energy pulse from its third eye what? in the center of its forehead that towards you. 21 will hit. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a glancing blow. <laughs> glancing blow. I need to get some extra dice. Oh, oh shit. shit. It's rolling D12s. I guess the enemies leveled up too. The DM is smiling way too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> are those D20s? They are D10s. Yes. You're going to take 21 psychic damage. Fuck me. <laughs> As you feel your brain pressing against your skull. Ew. <laughs> Upri, it's your turn. Uh huh. Well, shit, that was weird, but you look fine, Red. <laughs> <laughs> the silence explains it all. All right, I'm going to run in and womp it. I'm not going to rage because I'm going to save my last rage for something important. <laughs> um, as a reminder, it is difficult to rain everyone. So mm, just perfect. keep that I in mind. I can get 15. I can get 20 feet. You can get 20 feet. Am I close enough to womp it? 20 feet is enough to make your way across the room and just barely reach it. Cool. I'm going to reckless attack for my first swing. Or two hand in fern. That is a 23 to hit. That'll do it. That was... Math is hard. Math is hard, yeah. Uh, 12 bludgeoning damage for the first swing. We've been doing it all day. You said 20? 12. Oh, okay. <laughs> but my like, second fuck? swing is a nat 20, which is what I got level it up. Oh my god. <laughs> so we're going to roll not one, not two, but four d10s. Ah, Welcome to the club. Just it right back at ya. <laughs> boom. 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 Avenge me. Not that I'm dead, but right. still. <laughs> Four D10s plus seven. Oh, shit. That's a lot of twos and ones. Oh, fuck off, universe. Uh, <laughs> eight plus seven. Eight is, is a 15 bitch. Fifteen damage. Fifteen. All right. A one, two twos, and a fucking three. You know, though, it is really looking quite fucked up uh, between the arrow sticking out of its face arrows two, there are two yeah, of them. arrows <laughs> sticking out of its face and the like bashing you just gave it it is struggling to find its attention to stay standing and it is Salvador's turn okay I'm gonna scooch in where I can Crouch down and get a shot off on it. I'll pull out my crossbow, and I'm going to aim for its face. Ooh, that's going to be a 14, which I don't think hits. A 14 does hit. Oh, awesome. Oh. Okay. Well, let's see how much this does. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so my it's curse a, is spreading. It's a total of two piercing and one thunder damage <laughs> for a total All of three. Right. So your little uh, dinky lightning bolt <laughs> um, hits it, but it is still standing. And that is when Upri. Yes. You didn't see them at first, hidden in the viscera of the, the walls. Say what name? In the tunnel. But now you see them flashing in the corner of your eye, jumping at your face. What are they flashing? <laughs> okay. 
So they are going to jump at you. The two little octopus-like tentacle monsters, the face fuckers. And one will hit you square in the face, immediately wrapping its tentacles around your neck. You feel it squeezing on your vocal cords, pressing in your voice box, and you cannot breathe. You cannot see. And the rest of you see this thing wrap itself around Upri's face. We are back up to Ren. Oh yeah. Um, Renda is not feeling great, so I'm gonna use a bonus action to drink one of the potions of healing, which I don't remember how much that is. Off the top of my oh head. shoot! I forgot to roll damage. Yes. Space mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't sure if they did. <laughs> yep. It grabbed um, me. It didn't damage. Win <laughs> win. <laughs> uh, so let me do that. Oh no, she's getting more dice. <laughs> beep beep. Beep. 20 bludgeoning damage. Have to 10, right? Is it nope, crushes not right your neck? <gasps> it's fine. Right. I'm still at fucking 80. Right. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> All right. Now we're on to Ren. Wow. I feel like I've been forgetting the damage for those things for a while. Oh, shit. <laughs> Um, well, I'm going to chug a potion of healing. It's 2d4 plus 2. So that's 8 healing, which doesn't feel like a lot, but will probably help me a little bit in the end. And I'm going to run in with my new fancy sword to help my friend. As you're running in that direction, you see the one that missed Upri is now scurrying through the cover along the side of the wall so it comes in and out of vision but you see that it is making its way around the perimeter of the room how high up is it about halfway up the wall which is about 10 feet up okay so i can't reach it from the floor um in which case i'm gonna run up and uh i'm gonna flank the standing one i'm gonna assume the upper can tear that thing off of her face on her own she's strong like that so I'm gonna flank the the the, uh, the is one it that flanking has flanking. <laughs> it is not flanking okay. if Upri cannot see. Oh, because it's not posing. Then I'm just gonna get up next to Upri and stab at the one, um, <laughs> not the thing on the face, because that feels a bit too spicy. Yes. <laughs> um, Thank you. Um, but I'm gonna try and get the attention of the other thing. That the one has on the arrows wall? in its face. Oh. Okay. Do you know what I'm doing? The humanoid creature. The humanoid creature, yeah. Oh, I just roll one dice because I don't have advantage. Sad me. Uh, does a 16 hit? Yes, it does. Okay, okay, okay. This is my new fancy sword, which does 1d6 piercing and 1d8 necrotic damage. Hmm. That is nine plus nine is 18 damage in total, three of which is necrotic damage. Yeah? All right. Finish it. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm just going to cut its head off. All right. Simple, easy. So you just slash into it, lobbing its head off. It falls to the ground. You watch as the gray ooze pus Fills out the base of its neck, and the creature falls over to the ground. Next up was Yonsei's me. Yonsei. All right. Since I'm getting tired of these face fuckers, I'm going to <laughs> use cast banishment. And since it's at the fifth level, I can cast it on an additional creature. So I'm gonna, wow. um, I'm gonna try to banish both of the face fuckers. All right. I hope nothing happens because it's, it's touching just, me. It's just the yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just vanishes from your throat. <laughs> so they make a saving throw? Yeah, a charisma saving throw. 
I rolled a 17. Nope, so it fails, so. And a three. Oh, so that one succeeds, so one is now banished. The one on Upri's face is the one that succeeded. Of course. That sucks. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's sucking right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been. I've now banished one into another plane of existence, and Bloop. it's gone. I placed a hex on the one that's now destroyed. I'm just gonna place a hex on the one that's on your throat next time. Perfect. So that is all I can do. That I end my turn. All right. That brings us. To upgrade. What can I do? <laughs> so you can attempt to attack it. It is on your face. You can try to pull it off. Let's pull it off. And throw it to me. Come on, Dad. Come on. Mama needs to breathe. What am I? Wait, what am I pulling it off with? <laughs> what am I adding? You will use a strength. Perfect. Check. 14. A 14 will do it. <gasps> but as you pull it off, you realize that it had gotten one of its tendrils down your throat, and you start to feel it rip up your throat, slicing the Roar. inside. I think I would stop as soon as it starts to hurt. You want to stop? Because ah! <laughs> then you'll bleed it to death. <laughs> And I don't have any throat lozenges. Yeah, I'll just stop as soon as I feel. Ah, uh, fuck! Hold on, let me do. Let me do odds and evens. <laughs> uh, odds, I stop. Evens, I keep going. Fuck! I rip it out. <laughs> All right. So as you rip it out, you have this searing pain up your throat as it slices up your throat. You are gonna take. Oh. 21 points of slashing damage. I imagine I just vomit blood as it comes out. (laughs) But it is no longer on you. You can see and you throw it to the ground. (laughs) That brings us to Salvador. Okay, you know the drill. Gonna do a sacred flame. It's gotta do dexterity saving throw. All right. Gotta be at a 17. It gets a three. (laughs) So with some more marksmanship, I'm going to shoot off a bolt of fire at it, and it takes a total of ten radiant. All right. Did you throw it away? Like, did you rip it out and, like, toss it somewhere? Okay. Yeah. I shoot it out of the air like duck on. (laughs) You said how much damage? It took a total of ten radiant. All right. All right, that brings us back to the top of the order with Ren. Doesn't the face fucker go? No. Its turn was just suffocating. Oh. oh. Then I'm going to... Are we flanking it and now? And spending its time sticking its tendril down her throat. Slutty face. <laughs> are, are we flanking it now? Or can I move to be flanking the thing? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, I guess you now. can. Yeah, you can move to flank it. Uh, does a? I'm assuming it does, but does a twenty-seven hit? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Fancy sword. Here we go. Let's see. And then two of these dice. Does that include sneak attack? Yeah. So two for sneak attack, one for critical analysis, one for the piercing damage of the sword, and one for the necrotic damage of the sword. I roll a lot of dice now. (laughs) I almost dropped it. Um, So that is 9, 10, 11. 11 plus, so 20 piercing damage and two necrotic damage. 20 piercing damage, two necrotic. That's cool. All right. Oh, and don't I heal with the sword? Isn't that a thing? That is something you can choose to do. So as you stab into the creature, you watch as not blood, but a yellowy bile liquid kind of wraps around the sword, almost like pulled out like bloodbender style from the body of the creature. And it goes and absorbs into the hilt. 
you can store that 1d8 or you can absorb it into your body through your arm. Oh, that's gross. But I'm going to absorb it. And can I retcon and say I absorbed the last attack too? On the, when I chopped off the head of the... Sure. Okay. Because I'm suffering and could use the health. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 2d8s? I think it's whatever I rolled, whatever necrotic damage I rolled, right? Yes. Is what I recover? Okay. Yep. Cool. That was five hit points, which is like, not great, but not the worst as well. All right. That brings us to Yancey. All right. I'm going to use poison spray on this face fucker, and it needs to do a con save of 16. It gets a 21. Oh, Jesus Christ. I already hexed it, so I can't do another hex, so that is all I can do. All right. Furthermore, when you see that it gets splattered with the poison spray, it doesn't react. Well, I may have to choose a different poison. Pick your poison, yeah. And then it flings itself into the air, this time at Ren. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dodge. A seven does not hit. Dodged. <laughs> um, so you duck beneath its arc, um, and it flies over you. Upright. I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> really? So I'm gonna run it and leap at it. Midair, reckless attack. Just try to slam it with fern. Just drop fern on it. Uh, does a seventeen hit? Seventeen will hit. That is four. <laughs> Of bludgeon and damage. All right. And then I land and quickly spin around with Fern again. Uh, dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. And that's for 10 bludgeon and damage. All right. So it is looking battered. Its shape is malformed. It is lost several of its tendrils and it is oozing profusely. And with the second hit, I want to launch it up and shout, Sal, you're up! <laughs> <laughs> and it is Sal's turn. Okay, you know, give me dexterity saving throw. All right. Ten. Nope. So, with another repeat performance, another ten points of radiant damage for this thing. All right. Um, so you see that it is burning with radiant energy. Its body is starting to shrivel as the ooze is basically raining down on you all as it's been flung up in the air and shot with this radiant spell. You're welcome. Bringing us back up to Ren. <laughs> so it's in the air <laughs> and it's and I have advantage because of radiant no, no sacred flame. That's guiding bolt. This is just uh, a regular time. Uh, what a shame. I'll just attack it normally then. We're playing oh, hack you say you. Yeah. <laughs> um, shit. Does a 14 hit? A 14 does hit. Brilliant. Um, and this one and this one. And I don't get my sneak attack damage, but that's okay. Ugh. Damn. Let me roll this one again. That was tilted. Okay. That is not great damage, um, but hopefully it's enough. Uh, four necrotic damage, which I will heal myself with. And then it is 11 piercing damage. So as you shoot this arrow through its body, stab it, sorry. <laughs> I want to run up. Is it, if it, does it die? Do I get to finish it? Yeah, f please finish it. Okay, I just want to run up and stick my sword out so it lands on my sword while midair. <laughs> and you skewer it. And, if I, and it. if I have to bonus action dash to get there quick enough, I will. <laughs> yeah. So you run up, you skewer its body, it falls to the hilt of your sword limp, and you feel a slight burn on your hand as the acidic blood drips on you. Casually fling it off this blade. You're out of combat. Upper immediately keels over and coughs up a lot of blood. Ah, <laughs> <coughs> oh, fuck that thing! <coughs> oh, here, here, come over here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend an a superiority dice to administer aid. So you're gonna get nine. 
points back. <laughs> Perfect. So at least the cuts have now scarred over. Yeah, do you give me some antiseptic, some throat spray that you put <laughs> yeah. right here? Yeah, a little bit of, let's just a little bit like, at, like drinkable aloe. Oh. <laughs> Ricola. And it, cools, it like soothes and cools the cuts on your throat. <sighs> All right, we should probably get out of here before that second face fucker comes back from where I sent oh, it. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, we got less yeah. than 40 so seconds. banishment lasts for how long? A minute. A minute. Oh. And it's regardless of the plane it's sent to? If it's from an, if it's native to another plane, if it stays there, it's if it's there for the minute, then it stays there. All right. You oh. don't know for sure, but you suspect that this could potentially be from another plane. I suspect that this is from another plane, so. <laughs> Hard to tell. We should get going before we find out, though. Yes, but I'm pretty sure if it is from another plane, it'll stay there. So, but we should we should still go. Yeah. So do we go down the empty hallway or the hallway that they were in? I think the hallway that they were in, because I imagine they're protecting. Yeah, if it's a half man, they would probably set up defensively. <laughs> Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm just it's gonna take a little to settle. <laughs> I take out another little bottle of this. This should at least dull the pain. Oh, they drink it. You got that whiskey we sold to? Oh yeah, here you go. <laughs> I double fist. It's um, gonna probably burn going down. Ah, you're right. <laughs> Do one then the other, one then the other. Yeah. All right, so we go down the hall where those things were. All right. So you make your way about twenty feet before you notice the tunnels branch. To the left and to the right. Do we hear running water? <laughs> Do we, we listen down the hall? Halls. You listen down the hall and... At first, you don't hear anything distinct. I mean, there's this throbbing cord that runs down both hallways. Oh shit, we gotta follow the cord. And you hear the sounds of dripping. You hear random echoes down either hallway. And then you hear something that feels almost like a heartbeat pumping, vibrating through the air. Full body sensation as the air is moved with this low, resonant tone. We can't tell a direction, though. Both. Maybe they both lead to the same place. That's true. Oh, these are the the pulsing chords. One, is there a direction of the pulse? Is, like, energy or things coming from, like, one side to the other? And two, are those two connected together? So it's like, are they leaving? Yeah, give me an insight. And is the the cord full of goo? Yeah, that's a nat one, which is a one. So you do remember that the cord had branched off in that previous chamber. Mm. And you saw that the cord kind of came together at each of the tunnels mm. and was thicker as it entered each of the tunnels. Almost like it branched off into the room to various sections of the room itself. But you can't make out a direction and flow of any fluid that could potentially be inside. Well, Rin, time to cut the cord and see which one oozes out fluid. Slash. Oh, you doing it? Yeah, I'll slash it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right? I, take, I take my axe and I cut one of the cords. So you slash down on the cord. Can you give me a dexterity saving throw? Oh, shit. <laughs> 16. Oh, shit. All right. You're going to pass and take half damage. Oh, shit. <laughs> 18 halved to 9. As you're sprayed with acidic goop. Which side does the goop come? <laughs> so it sprays quickly and then stops and slowly pulls out of the tube from whence you came just a little bit and stops as that section of the cord stops beating 
You watch as the other section of the cord quickly cauterizes itself and continues to beat. We go that way. Yeah. The one that's still beating. Is that left or right? Well, I think where we came from was cut off, so we don't know if it's left or right. Oh, we didn't cut at the right spot. You could try again further upstream within one of the mm. branches. All right. Do you think I can hit it with an arrow from far away? Well, I could I, try and hit it from an I have a rope and I have a dagger. So what I can do is tie the rope to the dagger and throw it and pull it back. So it avoids damage. Oh, yeah. Am I allowed to do that? You can. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take the rope out of my backpack that I have this entire time, but <laughs> YOLO. And I'm going to tie my dagger to it, and then I'm going to kind of scorpion style throw it at. Get over here! Exactly. <laughs> but more like stay over there. <laughs> I'm going to throw it, and then I'm going to swing up so it does a cut, and then return the dagger to me. All right. Give me a, an attack without proficiency, because this is kind of a makeshift situation that you have. That is. So it's a d20. Plus your dex. Plus your dex. Oh, okay, so not the plus seven. Mm-hmm. What's my dex? I think it's three. Yes, it is. And that's a six. Cool. All right. So your first throw fails. I'm going to gonna... try again. I'm going to try it again. Do you okay. want me to try? So you pull I'm it go- back in. I think I'm too proud at this moment. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That is a 14. A 14 is not going to hit. Third time's a charm. Ren's over here tossing Never his mind. dagger. <laughs> that was six. You can do it. Go ahead. Ren's just going to throw his dagger. Ren's going to analyze it first. Because <laughs> that helps me. Um... And does a 24 hit? <laughs> yes. Sorry, 23. So the dagger goes into the cord. Yeah. It's sticking out. You see a spray of acid shoot out of the cord. And then you watch as it begins to cauterize itself. The dagger sticking out of the cord. It didn't slice through the cord? Mm-mm. I know. All right. I got this. I'm just going to go up and take your dagger. Try to sever it. All right. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Is it again something I can see? Yes. Woo! (laughs) 14. A 14 will do it. Oh, thank God, because I'm at 69 health. (laughs) Take half damage. But you will take (laughs) half damage. (laughs) Oh, shit! (laughs) I forgot already. Eighteen have to nine again. <laughs> Work. <laughs> so much um, exfoliation. <laughs> so this time you slice through the core. Two ends. You are up past the branch. And you watch as it pours out a little from both ends and then cauterizes. Both sections still beating. All right. Any, any, any dramatic move. Yeah. I hate it here. Uh, let's go right. Yeah. Because right will take us farther into the cave. If we go left, we're, still, we're headed back towards where we came from. Oh. Eh. Depending. I feel like... Yeah, it could curve. It could change. Yeah, yeah you've going, been going damn. through some winding natural caverns. It took us a while to get here first. That's true. I feel like both ways will lead to where we need to go if they're both beating. That's fair. Oh. All right. Right it is. We're going right. All right. So you follow this tunnel on further to the right, and it winds back and forth for about 200 yards before it opens up into another chamber. Again, bodies, 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 pinned to every inch of the wall now overlapping layers of corpses half absorbed melted their features lost their forms goopy and soft 
and there are two points of egress. One you could assume would have been the left pathway entrance into this chamber, now meeting back up. The other continues on towards the heartbeat, growing ever louder, vibrating deeper and deeper into the core of your being. And you see that cord getting thicker and thicker as more branches from this chamber meet it. Well, let's go that way. Yeah, to the heart. To the heart. Go give this thing a myocardial infarction. How do you know know those words? (laughs) That's the only thing I know, though. That's correct, though. Who is leading the way? I will. (laughs) I mean, you have less hit points than I do. I have 71 plus 8 temporary. So I will lead. All right. right. Give me a perception check, Yance. That's a 15. All right. So again, you notice these bundles of almost like brittle starfish. Kind of bundles of this veiny material collected in sections along the floor. But you notice them and make your way around weaving through the room, avoiding them until you reach the other side. You step into a very short tunnel that quickly opens up into a very large chamber. You notice the bodies on the wall are still present here, but something immediately is noticed as distinct and different from before. These are not goopy. These are not half melted. These don't even have their faces ripped off, replaced by the parasitic creatures you've been fighting. One face in particular, Yance, you recognize. It is Alice Perok. Unconscious, eyes closed, you see her red hair. Yon's never met Al. I've never met Alice. That was Pan Pan and Upri. Oh, maybe you have heard. Right? From Alice is the, mm-hmm. is the adventure with the mushrooms, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've never you met her. You recognize her from Upri's descriptions. Oh. Her red hair is striking. Oh, okay. Now that you're saying it that way, I can... Holy shit. Is that Sorry. Alice? And as Yance calls your attention to it, Upri, you spot her as well. Oh, Pinned fuck. Pinned up against the wall. Next to... Don't you dare. A balding man. Oh, okay. Wait. A beard... You've never met him in person, but he kind of looks like the drawings from the Wanted posters. Oh. Could that be Vladlin Purdue? The posters do not do him justice. <laughs> they do. Yeah. His or do him too much justice. His <laughs> wrinkled visage is drooping as his head is kind of frumped over to the left. But the cords hold him and Alice pinned up against the wall. But that is when your attention is drawn elsewhere in the room as you're slowly inching forward. You realize the source of the heartbeat. In the center of the room, There is a pustulous 
almost arachnid in form creature, a giant monstrosity with tendrilled legs wrapping around sections of the room. It's bulbous carapace touching the ceiling of this chamber, maybe 30 feet up. And it's black beady eyes, hundreds of them staring the two of you down. You feel the pulsing of the room, that heartbeat shaking your body as you watch one after another of the little black octopus face fuckers (laughs) pop out from the rear section of this creature. (laughs) In little sacks of phlegm. Everybody roll initiative. Uh, Wait, can I roll perception to see if Sigourney's anywhere? (laughs) (laughs) New? Is there a new? Who's Sigourney? (laughs) Oh, no. A local weaver. Sigourney, we love you. Why did I roll with advantage? I I have an 18. Because you're seeing me roll with advantage, I think. Uh, 16. 9. 8. 9. And I'm going to roll physical dice for this because it feels right. right. Uh, Uh, Been saving up uh, big spells. Good. Yancey, as you stare into those black beady eyes, your own eyes feel as if they glaze over and you almost feel like you fall into the black abyss. Oh no. And as you hear a voice you all hear, you hear this chorus of voices in unison. Join us. Join us. Join us. You watch, Yancey, as your vision falters. You feel trapped between two worlds. The reality of your external world and the reality of your internal world. You have flashes of Blade's crumpled body, twisted, crushed, lifeless. And as this voice continues to ring throughout, your mind, you watch as Blade's body begins to animate. As it decrumples, it cracks and twists in so many abnormal ways. As you notice pieces of him replaced by other appendages foreign of his body, kind of Frankenstein together, twisted and mashed into his form. As you blink, you feel your body tense and welling with anger. You find yourself back in this room in the present moment, the present place, staring down this creature, knowing that it has some connection with whatever the fuck stole blades from you, whatever the fuck stole Upri from you, whatever the fuck continues to threaten to steal everyone in your life from you. 
what would you like to do? As I am looking deep into the eyes of this queen bee or queen spider, I'm going to plant my feet down, shoulder width apart, get very comfortable. I'm going to outreach my hands and my eyes start to turn red as I summon in admiration. Aberration. I don't know how to pronounce that word. It's That's okay. right. Aberration. All right, so I'm going to cast that, and I'm that I bring back an apparent spirit, and it's going to be a star spawn, and it will attack after me each turn. It has hit points of 60, an armor class of 16, and a speed of 30. So... As my eyes glow red, you see through the black goop something peek out, like rip out, like a like that person in Alien, that the alien in Alien, and it swirls up. And then you see claws, you see the eyes of a teal, and you just hear it roar very voraciously. Oh my god, it's summoning shit! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Y'all get down! Alright, so you conjure up this aberration, this star spawn, and it is this guttural roar it lets out into the chamber. It would echo if it wasn't covered in so much viscera absorbing the sound in this room. It's great sound. Great. And what does your summon do? After my turn, it starts to do things. Okay. But before I end my turn, I am going to displace a hex on this spider. I'm just going to name it Melissa. I don't Melissa. Guess. Um, I may change the name every time. Um, I'm just going to place a hex on it just cause, so it does extra damage every time I attack it. All right. So you point a finger at this creature and you hex it. And as I'm hexing it, I'm saying, this is for blades. And then that is the end of my turn. All right. So that brings us to your summon. Yes. So at the start of the aberration's turn... Hold on. I got to go back to... The do do do. Hold up. Some scary sound effects here. Scary sound effects here. Um. So at the start of its turn, it squish, de- squish <laughs> exactly. At the start of its turn, it does a whispering aura. So at the start of each of the aberrations' turns, each creature within a five feet of the aberration must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your spells DC or take 2d6 psychic damage. All right. So do you send your aberration at the creature? Yes. To get within five feet? Yes. Okay. So at the start of each of your aberration's subsequent turns, that will happen? Even I think at this, well, I guess if I moved it, then yeah, at every other turn it will. All right. And then... It's going to do a psychic slam. The Whispering Ore is at the start of the turn, but the actual action is a psychic slam, which means it attacks your spell attack modifier to hit, reaches five feet, one creature, it's, and it's 1d8 plus three plus my spell level psychic damage. All right, does it make an attack? Yes. Okay, roll for attack. Your spell attack modifier to hit, which is an eight. So does a 24 hit? A 24 does indeed hit. All right. So that's 1d8 plus 3 plus the spell's level psychic damage. But I don't... I did it at fifth level. Would that be the level? Yeah. yeah. All right. So 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 4 is 12 psychic damage. In addition... Oh, I guess my hex is for me, not for it. So never mind. Correct. Yes. So 12 Psychic? Yes. All right. Or we're all just standing there and be like, what? what's going on? The chorus of voices reaches into each of your minds, but is loudest in Yonsei's, how dare you? And a 
it is Upri's turn. He took my potential lover. <laughs> wow, it, it's on our side? What the fuck is happening? I guess. Yawn? My eyes are just red. Ah! All right. Uh, I'm going to run up to it and make sure I'm at least 10 feet away from that thing at all times. <laughs> five feet. More, more than five feet, so 10 feet away. <laughs> and I'm going to yell... You go into a rage. Roll on that table. One time left. Seven. Here's the number. <laughs> a bunch of beautiful vines and flowers and other foliage uh, grow through the ground within 15 feet of me, and it is now difficult terrain wherever I walk. <laughs> All right, for so the difficult for terrain for everyone. of the goopy, gross, nasty floor is now difficult terrain mixed with flowers. And vine. And vine. Oh, right, it was already <laughs> it's a brand book. As they wrap and weave in and out of the cords of viscera throughout this room. And then I'm going to reckless attack. Oops. That is a 25 to hit. 25 will hit. That does 16 bludgeon damage. And don't forget, you attack with advantage against me. And then. Uh, 15 to hit on the second attack. 15 will not hit. Oh, fuck. Right. Um, as you hit a hard spot in its carapace, Fern is stopped dead in her tracks and skids off. Well, I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use one of my legendary actions now <clears throat> at the end of your turn. But not at me, right? Because I'm an angel. As... A... We will be sued. <laughs> no! <laughs> As a blast of psionic energy is shot at you, Apri. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be physical damage, is it? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> it is not. Oh. Um, and that's going to be a 24 to hit. I'm going to hit so I'm going to pull a couple dice out. 21 psychic damage. <laughs> you need a potion. <laughs> uh, and then it is going to be the Hive Queen's turn. What? Yes. Um, as you watch the umbilical cord in the room start to pulse, you watch as you can see fluid pumping into her body, pulling from the bodies in the room. Oh shit, we gotta free. And she begins to heal. Oh. <laughs> So we need to cut out Vlad and Alice. How many bodies are technically in the room? It's covered. It's covered. Wall. To, it's like uh, wallpaper. It's like wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> wall people. Oh, oh, wall people. Would we a long rest or something before we got? <laughs> I know. Yeah, we did like that. Uh, and maybe we sleep. What? No, I used that today. Oh, boo. Yeah, the theater was like what? Eight, it was like hours, eight hours ago. ago. <laughs> You see her limp appendages that are at first lying on the floor motionless. They begin to lift up into the air and she begins to flail them around the room, targeting each of you. Uh-huh. A 20 will hit Upri. Uh-huh. This feels like bludgeoning damage though. A crit will hit Yance. Oh. Uh, I am going to use my reaction to pull strings, puppet threads, and pull the attack that's about to hit Yance, invoking disadvantage. All right. Oh, well, thank you. An 18 will still hit Yance. Okay, at least it's not a crit. Yeah, it's not, not a, a crit. crit. A 17 will hit Ren. Damn it! <laughs> But a 17 will not hit Salvador. They got 19 now. Rude. Hey, your shield back. All right. So the three of you are just whipped across the room with these tendrils. 
still about to lose a lot of points because I have a bunch of reactions now. <laughs> <laughs> and you are pinned to the walls. She then wraps around Apri and pulls her back <laughs> in towards her. Since I got hit, can I use this to do a counter spell? Not a count. Wait, hold up. Can't okay. you talking there when I yeah, lost Yeah, counter spells for spells. Um, this is a physical attack. She pulls Apri back in towards her and then... I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Have I taken damage from getting hit? No. All right. Oh, good. She just pushes you each into the wall, pinning you grappling both Yance and Ren. Let's roll new dice. So I can't do my reaction of Hellish Rebuke? No, because you haven't taken damage. Six. And she pulls Upri in towards her to be face to face with her. And that is when you feel the charm set in over your body. Oh no. You are now charmed by her, and you regard her as the queen, a matriarch to be heeded and protected. After charming you, she sets you back down on the ground and turns you around to face your party. (laughs) Her safety is of critical importance. You must do everything in your power to protect her. Work. If she or any of the hive spawn do something harmful to you, you can repeat your saving throw. Where? Otherwise, <laughs> the effect lasts for 24 hours <laughs> or until the queen Yikes. is destroyed. This is includes psychological harm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about trauma? Trauma? Uh, trauma? <laughs> Tell me about your mother. Beautiful. And that's her turn. Ren, what would you like to do? You are pinned to the wall, grappled by her. Right. I'm going to do something spicy, and I'm going to use one of my... uh, What do we call them? What are they? The fun or fun corruption abilities? What are they called again? Your soul class spells? I'm going to use the soul class spell meld form on her. Um, All right. Read the language of that spell for our listeners. You gain an attribute of the target creature resulting in a temporary feature per the DM's discretion. If the attribute results in a manifestation of an extra appendage based on the creature's attack, this appendage operates on its own turn, but it shares initiative, potentially granting you an additional attack each turn, such as a tentacle attack. And then it goes into the AC of the appendage, and if I lose the appendage, etc. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, So as you cast this spell on her, you're going to gain one of her tendrils. It bursts out of your chest. It is now an extra attack with a plus eight. Plus eight, okay. And it uses a d12 for the purposes of your absorption. Absorption? Your absorption of it. You take on this feature. Right. What does a d12 have to do with it? A d12 for damage. Oh, for damage. Plus anything? Plus your strength gotcha. modifier. Can I treat it like a weapon? As So if I ana- analyze something, I can use intelligence instead? No. But it does have proficiency okay. in the way that it operates. How long is it? <laughs> it has a reach of 50 feet. 50 oh feet? <laughs> yeah, you can stand out in the hallway. Remember how these are all stretchy, goopy, gooey, lovely, beautiful tendrils of aberrant properties? Yeah. So that's what that was my action. Yeah. I uh, my tentacle bursts so it like a tendril. So it's not even yeah. a tentacle, just like this. You can also grapple creatures your size or smaller instead of doing damage. Okay. Sounds good. 
Um, <laughs> the good thing about that is that part of this, the, the I guess, boon from this ability is that I have advantage on attacks against creatures that I have used melt form on. Yes. So I have permanent advantage on her, which is great. Beautiful. And I'm going to use my offhand to stab the leg with a dagger mm-hmm. that is on me for, as my bonus action. All right. Which I have advantage on now. <laughs> Does a... Oh, I didn't analyze her yet. That's okay. Does a 23 hit? A 23 will hit, yes. Brilliant. Okay, so that's... I add my sneak attack damage in there, but I think that's it. Great. Uh, that is four, five, seven piercing damage. All right. You jab into the tendril. Pus oozes out of it, but it does not let go. Oh, and I'm also going to... Sorry, I keep going. I'm also going to lacerate it. I'm going to use one All of right. my superiority dice to lacerate it. So it takes an extra one <laughs> uh, piercing damage, and it has to make a constitution saving throw. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. I lied. Sorry, I'm going to neuro block it. Neuro block it. What yeah. does that do? It can't heal until my turn. So until my next turn. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, <Good>. fuck. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's repeat. So, no laceration? No laceration. So, it doesn't right. have to make a constitution saving throw. And but it gets I do back that from one healing. point of damage you dealt. To yes. It. yes, it does get back <laughs> that one point, point of damage. <laughs> All right, so you neuroblock it, and um, it cannot heal on the start of its turn. Um, and sorry, so sorry, I have a lot of questions. This tentacle, can I wield a sword with it? No. Okay, fair it, enough. It does its physical thing. It kind of operates with your will, but independently. Okay, so you, that's fair. You don't control it per se, but it <laughs> operates with your intention. Gotcha. So it doesn't like get advantage in the way that I get advantage. That's fair. No. Okay. Then I'm going to use it to bop it in the face because I can, right. it can reach that far. Yes, it can. Pass it. Does a natural one hit? I'm going to, no. I'm just going to give up that for that one. So that's it. That's my whole turn. You hit it at this hard, it. hard part, yeah. like right between two of its eyes. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem to get through the like thick carapace around its body. It's also acting a little erratically because I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to use another legendary action at the end of your turn. Great. To shoot a blast of psionic energy at you. Uh, a 19 will hit. So I'm going to roll some dice. Fifteen psychic damage. Jeez. Okay. And that brings us to Salvador. Well, you have to do a wisdom saving throw because you used the soul spell. Mm, oh, yes. right. Please do Thank that you. now. 18. So we're good. Yeah. All right. So that passes. So you do not feel the pool of the corruption overtaking your body today. Yeah, what if I did? <laughs> Salvador. I'm going to I'm going to position myself so that I'm in range of Upri and the spider lady is on the ground or she's still floating. Melissa. Oh, yeah, she takes up the room. Oh, okay. Like, How there's... Big she? she is gigantic. Okay. <laughs> she is 30 feet tall. Perfect. When sitting on the ground. When yeah. sitting on the ground. <laughs> when she's standing, she gets a little bit tall. Yeah. Okay. She cannot stand in this room. Oh, she's so always squatting. She's out. always... she. Her body is stationary on mm. the ground. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. No running for her. For now. I'm going to use one of my soul spells on her, and I'm going to cast Frightening Swirling Dream. Oh. So right. she has to do a wisdom saving throw, and Upri also has to do a wisdom saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Nat one. <laughs> so two. That's probably good, though. Um, a nine. So you both fail. So you are now frightened, which means that... She's going to burn a legendary resistance. Okay. So Upri, you are frightened. <laughs> Me too, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you have to stand. No, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> you have disadvantage on checks and attacks while I'm inside of you, and you can't willingly move closer to me. Inside of you. <laughs> no, what he said. Yeah. And I have to do an intelligence <laughs> saving throw. Of you. Insight. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, I fail. Which means that one of two things happens, Tim, which might be good for you. 
Either a, vi a hostile creature appears or an effect occurs. So as you were trying to frighten the queen, what is something that you can think of that might be frightening to this creature? A bar of soap. I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> Seriously, that's the first thing whenever I walked into this room is just like, it is a disgusting, seething mass of blood and muscle and death. And the only thing I can think of is either the winds of Tao, like blowing her literally out of this room or just cleaning the whole place. All right. So we're going to take that concept and push it a little bit to like a kind of eradication of the infestation. Yeah. She is a hive mind creature that has taken hold here in the city and some sort of suffectant, so to speak, to wipe her away her influence. And so I am going to instead manifest that as a wave of fluid that crashes down on you, knocking you prone, Salvador. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. You manifested fluids. <laughs> <laughs> Not my intent. By accident. Yeah. Oops. And is that your first point no. of corruption uh, now? No, your I, so I failed the saving throw, but I passed my wisdom saving throw. Not you to be pay, passed your corruption yeah. save. Okay. That is going to be her third and final oh, thank God. legendary action for the round. So this this is a concentration spell, so I'm going to maintain it. And I use my movement to move. So that's, that's all. All right. So she's going to use her third and final legendary action for the round and shoot a ray at you, Salvador. And she has advantage because you were prone. But disadvantage because of fear, right? No, she she's not, not fear. Oh, is right. It, she resists. Is it a ranged spell? Yeah. Because ranged spells have disadvantage if I'm prone. Yeah. It's melee that gets the advantage. Oh, yeah. it doesn't matter anyways because I rolled a three and a four. <laughs> which, <laughs> even with plus seven is not enough to hit Salvador. Yeah. And that brings us back up to the top of the round with Yancey. So as I was reading through everything, <laughs> I can do compulsion as an Eldritch Ford invocation once per long rest. So mm -hmm. I'm going to cast that. All right. You need a wisdom save of 16. All right. And what is the language of the spell? Creature of your choice. Oh, so blah, blah, blah. On a failed save, a target is affected by the spell. Until the spell ends, you can use a bonus action on each of your turns to designate a direction that is horizontal to you. So I think I can just move it. It says, each affected target must use as much of its movement as possible to move in that direction on its turn. It can take its action before it moves after moving in this way. It can make another wisdom saving throw to try to end the effect. And it can't go into anything dangerous, but if it does move, it will provoke opportunity attacks to move into. So we get opportunity attacks when it moves. If you are in range. Yes. The only one in range is the operation. Upgrade. And the aberration. And, but it can't move, right? It's, it's, it can move. can move. No, but the queen. It has a speed of 10. Oh, <laughs> oh God. So my, it can lift its ass up my idea, and slowly move itself over. My idea is that to disconnect it to its roots somehow. Maybe. That's fair. Mm. Everything that you have passed so far has had a level of flexibility to it. So the umbilical cord is flexible. Mm -hmm. The viscera is flexible. All of the tendrils are flexible. So it will be able to move and continue to attack. It's huh. just moving 10 feet over. It will take an opportunity attack from your aberration, but that's about it. Nothing else will bar it from continuing to do what it is doing. Not if I turn it backwards. It can turn it self around. That's oh. not a mechanic in D and D, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, I tried. I tried. Um, would you like to redact compulsion? No. Okay. I made that choice for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I am not going to burn a legendary resistance for that. So it is on the start of its turn. It will have to move 10 feet in a random direction. The direction of my choice. Direction of your choice. It will have to move in a direction of your choice, and it will move 10 feet. All right. So I'm going to move it backwards. I don't know what that means in terms of... Away away. from us. Away from us. So on its turn, it will do that. It will start to move 10 feet away from you. My apparition will get an opportunity attack then. Yeah. And then after that... I've already hexed it, so I can't do much else. So it is the end of my turn. All right, but aberrations th- turn. Yes. So at the start of this turn, hold on. There's a. I forget the. You have to do a saving throw or something. Yes. Um, so some an aberration of. So I rolled a seventeen. That's going to pass. So it won't get. The Whispering Aura. All right. But I will do Psychic Slam. So that is a 19 plus 8. So that does a 27 hit. A 27 will hit. Yes. So that is going to be 8 plus 7. So that's going to be 15 damage. All right. Nice. So you do 15 damage psychic damage to the Hive Queen, and it is no Upri's turn. She is frightened by Salvador. She is. So she's going to run away from Salvador towards the aberration and say, you stay away from my beautiful queen, you (laughs) ugly bitch. (laughs) And I'm going to make a reckless attack against the aberration. Does a 22 hit? Yes, Yes. it does. Uh, that will be for 11 bludgeoning damage. Does a 17 hit? Yes. And that's an additional 9. So 20 bludgeoning damage total. And that's my turn. All right. It is the Hive Queen's turn. She cannot heal. Yes. Because she is neuroblocked. <laughs> But got three more of those. <laughs> <laughs> but she still has Ren grappled. Yes. And she still has Yancey grappled. Yeah. She does have to move though, so I don't even know what that means. So she yeah. is going to with some of her other appendages, because she has many. You see she hoists her body up. She presses into the ceiling, which she was already touching, Mm. and she pushes against it. I'm gonna roll a d20 to figure out what happens when she does this. Uh, Uh, Is this before the opportunity attack? She is about to move, so I'm gonna roll a d20 to figure out the events that are taking place. So as she pushes herself up and begins to scrape across the ceiling of the cavern, chunks of the ceiling begin to break off, falling around the room. So she will take that opportunity attack, so make that with your aberration. All right, I'm gonna do Psychic Slam and that's gonna be a 23 to hit. That will hit. And that's going to be for nine psychic damage. All right. So you do nine psychic damage. And now everybody in the center of the room, so not Ren or Yancey who are pinned up against the wall, but Upri and Salvador do a dexterity saving throw as chunks of the ceiling begin to crumble down on the room. I fail. <gasps> yes. A nine. Is this technically her hitting me, though? Even though, for the purposes of I my... think I'm going to have to rule yes. <laughs> for that room. this is a an attack from her on you. Okay. So, I so can make... it is going to hit. And you said it failed too, yeah. Salvador? Yeah. So both of you are going to get hit. I'm going to roll a d10. Damn. 
Um, it's gonna be six potion. bludgeoning damage on each of you. Boom, and you three. can make a saving throw now. <laughs> Does anybody have a reaction wisdom. to help? Which die? Uh, to help Russ or to um, help Upri? Uh, with a wisdom saving throw? Anybody? Anybody? No, mine no. only works on myself. Damn it. I, have to, I can't. 18. Nice! <laughs> An 18 save. So <laughs> as you are just clobbered with this chunk of ceiling. Ugh. You come to. You know what? The Fuck you, Queen. Is lifted, <laughs> and you realize that you had been charmed. Oh, oh my you god! You are now back in the fight. Okay, it's still the Queen's turn, though. <laughs> Pinned from underneath the so light. So she you got is <laughs> scraping around. The ceiling's falling. She plants herself ten feet backwards away from you all, further into the cavern, and then. Does that mean another opportunity attack? No, that's, that's still the same oh, movement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then she is going to Yonsei and Ren. Oh no. You feel her tendrils wrapping around you. And they begin to burn. All right, so they begin to burn and you start to feel this ringing in your mind and you feel as if the energy is trying to be sapped out of your body. Yancey, you wriggle enough to loosen the grip and prevent the attack from hurting you. Damn. But Ren. I'm not so lucky. You're not so lucky. You will take five psychic damage. Okay. Plus an additional 11 necrotic damage. Don't forget you have all those potions. Yeah. I can only drink one per turn. She would normally sap this energy into herself to <laughs> heal, but you have blocked her ability to do so. I sure have. However, your maximum hit points are reduced by that 11 right. until you finish a long rest. And that is Ren's turn. Well, she's gonna get stabbed by my my sucky sucky sword. <laughs> Cause that heals me. Come on, crit. Sucky you could, sucky. I could mommy. use the extra bits. <laughs> Why did you Cause you don't you have to Oh I'm stabbing, stabbing a leg. Oh, okay. I'm being pinned right, I'm still pinned. You are still Sorry. grappled, I'm yeah. Stab, I'm stabbing the leg. Oh, that's a good roll, but not a crit. Uh, that is a... Well, oh, I'm bonus action. Analyze. Boop, 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 That is a... Oh, I can't math right now. 27 to hit. 27 will hit. We're going to neural block again, which actually does do more damage. So that one dice I did before should have been there, but it was oh, over. Oh, okay. Over. Sneak attack. Critical. Weapon damage. We're all waiting measure. as Ren is collecting dice. I have to make sure I do all the <laughs> dice. Okay, so blue is necrotic. My blue at D8 is the necrotic damage, so I know how much I heal. An eight! Yes! Ooh, that's good. Okay, so that is eight. That's eight necrotic damage. All right. Plus 10, 15, 19, plus 9. 28. 28 piercing damage. Eight piercing damage was eight necrotic damage. That is 36 damage in all. All right. So as you jab into this tendril, it releases you, drops. Wow. And you see that necrotic energy travel up the tendril into the queen's body. Uh-huh. And she reels that arm back. She sucks it back into her body. Does she have a weakness to necrotic? Does it do double damage? Do I heal double damage? That's all wrong, isn't it? It was just a lot of damage. Oh, fair enough. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I'm a I'm a slapper with my with my tentacle. 
Oh my right. god, I forgot about <laughs> it already. Tentacle slay. Oh, I rolled too far away. That is a 16 to hit. A 16 will hit. Okay. That is... No. Oh, uh, 12 bludgeoning damage. I'm assuming it's bludgeoning. I'm yes, it's bludgeoning. Bit, slap her across the face. All right. Legendary action. Psionic ray at you, Ren. I'm She's hiding behind people. <laughs> <laughs> Her leg is there. So a twelve plus nine. Oh I've been lucky. No this whole seven. Session. Twelve plus yeah. seven is nineteen. That will hit. So pull out my four d tens. Twenty psychic damage. I go down. That's exactly how much hit points I have. Oh fuck! So I'm down. As you I you basically just like yeah, blood starts pouring out your ears. Your brain hurts so bad that you just pass out from the pain. What does my tentacle do? It goes limp. Okay, so it doesn't fall off. Yeah. No, yeah. it is still part of you. All right, Salvador. Melissa is all by herself. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, at least 10 feet away from her. And the umbilical cord is attached to her? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say, hey. I mean, multiple umbilical oh. cords are attached to but her. But they're feeding into her, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say, hey, nice place you got here. I'm going to cast Ice Storm on her. So, <laughs> so she's going to do please. a dexterity saving throw. Maybe could be instead. I'll give you all the big I mean, <laughs> I've got some healing marks. That's true. But yeah. DC 17. You said dex? Dexterity, yeah. Oh, God. We get a two. We get a negative. A sixteen. Ooh, just enough to fail. <laughs> so many dice. Ten plus nine. Nineteen points of damage to her. And to the umbilical cord, I hope. Yeah. Usually nineteen damage to her and, and lots of things around the room in that area. And the area around her is a difficult terrain, a 20-foot radius. We are layering we layers on <laughs> difficult terrain. terrain. It's like how it is. It is impassable in that area. And then there's area. flowers and vines, and now there's snow on top of both of them. And it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect the aberration because it's just a spirit. Yeah. And it's also out of range, I think. Or no, I only moved 10 feet. Yeah. But I moved it, so it's in the corner. All right. Again, another legendary action. Salvador. I'm standing this time, though. <laughs> that is true. A seven plus seven is 14, which will not do it. Was I going to get a healing word on that? Yeah, I can give you, I'll give you a healing word. And the healing word is a uh, stick to it What? Stick to it Stick to stick to it It's grit. It's gumption. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can't hear you. <laughs> he is and, legit unconscious. Yeah. And you take uh, five points of healing. Thank you. All right. So you, you are barely <gasps> brought oh, back into God. existence. Um, Yance, it's your turn. All right. Just because I'm a creature of habit. And you're still grappled. Okay. Can I use one of my actions to... Well, at the start of my turn, I can... No, I start their turn. I can compel to do something. Um, compulse. Um, I don't know what to do here. Can I get ungrappled? What do I need to roll? You can. You can use an action to use strength to ungrapple. I'm going to do that. All right. <laughs> do a strength check. Oh, Lord. My strength is my weakest. It's a negative one. I'm also going to do, while I'm doing this, because I know I have something here that can help a bitch out. What's it called? Never mind, it's an ability check. Lord Jesus Christ, Mary, Mother, and Joseph. All right. 14. A 14 will not do it. Whoa. You try as you might to release the grip of the tendril around your torso but it stays steadfast. Do you have a bonus action you would like to use? I can use Misty Step. You oh. can. Yeah, that would get you ungrappled. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll ungrappled. use Misty Step as my bonus action. <laughs> All right. 
Maybe I should have did that first. So you burn your second spell slot to miss. Wait, it would lose. Then never mind. I need to wait. Save it. It is a spell slot. Yeah. Uh, Then I will. Then I will not, since it's the second level. Yes, listeners, we uh, (laughs) we noticed uh, some. extra spell casting in our last episode uh, and had to do a little bit of investigation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Because <laughs> we've learned now. I also want the audience to know that I'm still very much new yes. to D&D, so please yes. let there be grace with the mistakes that I make. Thank Always. you. Always. Please and thank you. And, and with all the things we fudge. <laughs> there's nothing else I can do, so I am done. All right. But my apparition can do stuff. So at the start of its turn, or their turn, I don't know what pronouns they use, but I'm going to respect it none the wiser. It can do the um, thingamabob, the whispering aura. All right. How much damage do I take? (laughs) Why? Because I'm next to it and the thing moved. (laughs) Can I move my apparition? Oh, wait. You can move your aberration, yeah. So I'll move it closer to it so you're safe. Well, isn't it at the start of its turn? It is at the start of its turn. Oh. So I will take the damage. Yeah. Which I'm sorry. Fine. I didn't. Um, so I and hit is it. that a wisdom save? It is a wisdom saving right. throw. Does an eight pass? <laughs> no. I'm also going to fail with a five. <laughs> so <laughs> I beat you. So it's 2d6 of damage. Oh, Lord. Of psychic damage, too. So that's going to be 12. Oh, fuck. Fuck off. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> um, but w- in addition to that, I am going to do Psychic Slam as well. A 13 does not hit. So. A 13 does not hit. And that will be its third and final legendary action of the round. And it is going to shoot a psionic ray at your aberration. Best choice. It will hit with a 26. And it is going to do 40, 10, plus 3, psychic damage. 21 psychic damage. All right, my aberration is hurting, but it's still alive. All right. Again, it is the Hive Queen's turn, and she cannot heal. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) And she's cold. And she's very cold. It has uh, affected her ability to produce aberrant spawn. Oh. Which she has stopped doing for the duration of the fight. Oh, okay. It's oh. not like she is multitasking here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <more babies. laughs> you are starting to notice that the sacks of phlegmy mucus are starting to move. The black creatures inside pushing on the embryonic sack that they were birthed into. And it is her turn. And she is going to let out a blast of psionic rays. Three of them, to be precise. So I'm going to roll attacks on, again, the Aberration, but also Upri and Salvador. Okay. That's not that bad. Thank you. (laughs) Aberration... 17 to hit, which and will do so. Yes. So 40, 10 damage. Okay, we're at 25 damage. It goes down. Yeah, it's done. Poof. Poof. Aberration is gone. Bye, Abby. Upry. <laughs> A 12 does not hit you. Ooh. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> and Ren. Not Ren, Sal. Or Sal. Excuse you. (laughs) Oh my goodness. A 14 does not hit Sal either, as you deflect it with your magical barrier. And it is Ren's turn. Ren is going to chug a potion. So that's 2d4 
It's not a lot of healing, but it's healing nonetheless. Wait, I didn't go. Yeah, upper goes before the hive queen. I go after Yon. And... Oh my goodness. I went straight from legendary action into her turn. Upri, you can go. <laughs> I'm going to reckless attack this bitch. Then run out. Boop, boop, boop. Does a 18 hit? Yes, it does. Perfect. She takes a whopping 14 bludgeoning. And that's definitely going to hit. It's 26. And she takes another. Ooh! 16 bludgeoning. Womp womp. Tell me things. how you end her. <gasps> what, already? Because <laughs> you stopped the healing. All right. She probably doesn't have a lot of health. <laughs> Fuck that bitch. Oh my god. Respectfully. Uh, <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> Disrespectfully for Jan's sake. <laughs> Disrespectfully curb stop her, please. <laughs> want to charge at her, jump in the air, slam Fern into her, and then pivot off of Fern the first strike, spinning upwards again and slamming down and just cracking her skull and sending goop everywhere. Oh my gosh. You pull Fern through the goop in her brain as it just pours out. Do a dexterity save. I can see it. <laughs> uh, dirty 20. All right, so you are going to take half damage. Work. I hope I go down because that'd be awesome. As her very acidic innards are frayed out in front of her. Um, Since you're in a rage, doesn't it have the half? Nope, only physical. 18 have two six. Nope. Oh, not half. Not half. Nine. But I'm still up with six. Oh, it's still 18. <laughs> <laughs> no, 18, yeah, nine. 18 have to not nine. six. No, it's not um, half. But it's not no. half. So it's just 18. <laughs> it's yeah. just 18. Um, half the damage. And you see that, like, steam rising from her brain matter, which is this, like, pinky gray goo. This, like, soup that was inside her head. It's not solid like our brains, but more of a arachnid-type soup. Yum. It's good soup. <laughs> but you all better start moving quickly because those things that she just finished birthing are starting to break out of their sacks. Can I cast Banishment on it? <laughs> There's like 20 of them. Yeah. I would be able to cast on two now. It's not worth it. We just gotta grab Al and Vladlin. Al and Vlad. (laughs) Vlad. Vlad and Vlad. And and, um, up for your potion. Wait, I think I have one. No, I'm good. (laughs) So you run on over to Al and Vladlin. Yeah, I'm gonna scoop Al. Upri. Yeah. As you scoop Al. No. You touch her skin and you're immediately ripped out of consciousness here. And the rest of you just see Upri freeze for a moment. (laughs) Holding rigidly Alice in her arms. So let's go to what Upri sees. Oh no. You're standing at the base of a mountain. A storm of black cyclones covering the horizon line behind the mountain. Building the whole sky is lit up with lightning. The wind is blasting around, whipping broken pieces of whatever and just chunks of stone whipping through the air, crashing into the ground all around you. And you look up to the top of the mountain and you see a figure standing. What do you do? Am I holding now? No, you're just standing there, just as you. How far away is the figure? the top of the mountain. And I'm at the bottom? And you're at the bottom. Uh, (laughs) I guess I'll start walking up the mountain. (laughs) You start to make your way up the mountain, winding back and forth up the pathway. I'm definitely muttering to myself like, fuck, I can't believe I'm fucking teleporting somewhere fucking again. (laughs) 
Jan's gonna fucking kill me. Ah! You spend hours trekking up and up the steep mountain path, clambering over stone and boulder, fording rivers, and through forests, occasionally losing sight of the figure, but eventually your view returns. And as you make your way closer, you begin to realize it is a woman with red hair. Her hair flies wildly in the storm whipping around her, but she remains motionless, steadfast, and you continue up around and around, back and forth, up the hairpin turns of the steep mountain path. And as you come closer, you recognize her as Alice, standing facing away at the edge of a precipice, looking down on the world. And as your eyes trail off in the direction of hers, you see a world laid bare, destroyed, dead. Craters pock the land. Clouds of black, tenderly storms cover masses of land, obscuring them from sight, and storms gather all across the terrain. And Alice just watches. Al? Do you remember me? She doesn't react, but as you approach and come around to see her face, her eyes are jet black, and black veins tendril across her face. She doesn't seem to react. I'm going to put my hand on her shoulder. Give her a little shake. Al? You go to touch her shoulder, and she takes a step forward off the edge of the precipice. Can I catch her? You try to grasp at her body. But you're too late. She's already falling. She is expressionless, does not react. Her arms flail with the speed of the wind behind her, and she falls. And just before she hits the ground, the tear opens up and she falls through. And you are whipped back into your body. <gasps> ah! Uppy, what's wrong? Ah! Uppy, snap out of it, and I slap uh, Uppy. We gotta face. go. Yeah. We'll talk later. I've started cutting down Vladlin using my tentacle. Oh. Pulling him down. <laughs> I don't want to touch any of that anymore. Uh, right. I, am, I am one acid splash away from going down again. So you uh, rip Vladlin off the wall. He is unconscious. Alice is unconscious in Upri's arm. And where do you go? Maybe Salvador and, and I should hold them since I haven't gotten hit once this session. And Sal probably is in better health than both of you. Uh, I only have 28. Uh, yeah. I think it more, makes more sense. We hold them and you guys lead the way. Hit yeah, well, anything that's in front of it. Well, I can't. Fair, you should You should carry it. I can't actually carry it. Oh, yeah, I'll <laughs> carry him. Yeah. Not um, even with your new chest thing in my Bob. Oh, it's going to probably fall off too. It doesn't <laughs> take that long. Uh, um, but okay. as we're leaving the room, I'm going to try and pull down some uh, ceiling stones to try and squish some of the creatures that are emerging from their exacts. Oh, that's All smart. Right. 
Oh, with your finger mode. With, okay. with my tentacle. Yeah. yeah, so you shoot your tentacle up to the ceiling because you can reach with a 50-foot reach. <laughs> um, and you just start crashing the, the floor down as you are running away. It is operating independently of you, so you don't have to divert your attention, and you can continue running out from whence you came. I'm assuming a minute passes, and part of this is that when there are a couple things that can happen. At the end of the minute, either there's a 25% chance that it stays with me for upwards of 24 hours. Um, Great, doesn't stay with me, but then I have to make a constitution saving throw or else it rejects itself from my body. Violently. Okay, I passed. It just falls off. Uh, I could take damage, uh, which might knock me out. So here we are. We're good. That's all. All right. I'm going to lead the way since I have the most hit points. I mean, since I'm the most alive. Healthiest. (laughs) I'm the healthiest. Appreciate it. So you make your way back through the tunnel system. The terrain is still difficult, but you notice as you are leaving that some of it is starting to fall apart. The umbilical cord is going flat, is losing fluid quickly, and the goop from the bodies is starting to flow down the walls as the viscera is starting to detach around you. You make your way through these tunnels, avoiding anything collapsing on you by just a miracle of grace. And you make your way back into the tavern. There, Aquila meets you, having heard the commotion. Oh my gosh. Y'all are alive. Well, barely. Mostly. I feel great. I feel as fit as a spring chicken. <laughs> Ren's, <just> gonna, <laughs> Ren's gonna go lay down. <laughs> right right this way. Uh, and she leads you into the back room, closing the trap door behind you, locking the door to the room that they are staying in with the cots. You are rejoined with Zahir, who embraces Salvador. Mm. Bran is excited to see you and helps you carry Vladlan and Alice's bodies to the cots and lays them down to rest. Bran, before you pass out, can you please take a look at Al and Vlad? Yeah, hold on. Um, Ren will, like, steady himself and then bring a chair over and sit down next to the cots. And I medicine them. All right. <laughs> Do my medicine thing. Give me a medicine check. Okay. <laughs> That's a nat one. But oh hold on. My God. But that is that is a 13. Yeah. Because I have such a high uh, okay. check. So you've never seen anything quite like this, but there's a couple things that you can notice. One, there do not appear to be any physical signs of damage to their bodies aside from bruising. Mm -hmm. However, they seem deeply dehydrated. They are unconscious. Their breaths are deep. Their heartbeat is slow. Dangerously slow. Okay. I will do a couple things. I've got two more smelling salts on me, so I'm going to give one to each of them essentially giving them some hit points back, hopefully. The idea being that if they're they're slow, smelling salts will hopefully like kick their their systems back into gears a little bit. Six and four All right. ac- across the two. It seems to help. Their heartbeats become stronger, but they are both still unconscious. All right. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm going to Put some ointment on their bruises to help the, with the healing and the pain. They need water. Make sure that they get some water every now and then. Not too much at once, but enough just to, like, rehydrate them a little bit because they're very severely dehydrated. Um, and then I'm going to go lay down again. You know, we should probably give them a bath, too, as they're still covered with sludge. 
I think at this point we all need baths. Yeah. <laughs> We're all covered in sludge. I'm going to look at a Bree and say, why don't you go lay down? You don't look really good. Uh, I'm fine, y'all. Uh, a Bree, just... sit your ass down. Okay. Yan is right. Come over here. Okay. And then I'll oh. motion to the cot next to me. Oh, we... <laughs> oh I thought we were going <laughs> to. All right. <clears throat> I say I lay down the cot next to you. I'll do like a quick exam of Upri too, just to make sure like there's no open yeah. wounds or anything. She has six hit points left of her 113. I have five. So yeah, you were on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Mine was, it... mine was psychic damage though. I'm, I have a lot of acid wounds. <laughs> it might be best if you all take a a rest. Those creatures may be outside still, Shit. but they don't seem to be able to find us back here. We could take shifts. Maybe, yeah. Jan, if you don't mind taking the first one, I think we'd all appreciate it. I can take the first and the second. So y'all can get no, some. No, you should get some. You, should, get say, too, y'all. you should also take a rest. Bran and I will be able to watch over you. Oh yeah, Bran's hunky and strong. And Zaheer didn't do anything, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like, oh, like saying it's like drifting off. Yeah, Bran is really hunky and strong. Yeah, he's a beefcake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he won't fall asleep. Do you also go to bed, Yance? If there's a cot next to a pre, I pull it up. Or if there isn't, I pull a cot next to her. Yeah. And I sleep right next to her. It just kind of just... It's gonna sound creepy, but think of it as like, like sibling love, like this, like stroking her head just to a, make sure. A bro cuddle. <laughs> Not even a cuddle. A bro cuddle. No, Not a cuddle. Like f- fatherly, <laughs> familially, <laughs> stroking my hair. Oh. Yeah. Like a good little big brother does. All right. So the four of you and Zahir is gonna also go out for a count because it's been a long. <laughs> long fucking day for him as well and are you gonna spoon you? oh yeah yes <laughs> so you spend <laughs> some time with Zaheer as well before you go to bed just cuddling a little bit making small conversation comforting his anxieties about you having gone off into the belly of the beast and he was never sure if you were going to return and he's just happy you're back, Salvador. It's the benefit of having such great friends to look after you. The ear is clingy. <laughs> and the four of you get a long rest. Go to bed. Oh, thank Nothing goodness. really happens for me because... You, you get, get your, your spell slots back. back. Yeah, you get your two spells back. <laughs> but legit. You're a warlock. Those are very, very special. <laughs> <laughs> Except I had everything still. Oops, nope, nope, nope. So you all get your long rest. And then you're awoken by a voice familiar to at least one of you. She's standing next to your cot, hovering over you, Upray. Upri, is that, is that you? Al, you're awake. I am. I'll sit up and hug her. Oh. Wow, I, um, I never thought that I would see you again. I mean. Quite interesting happenstance. Yeah, we, we saved you. Yes, so I've heard. Would you like some tea? Um, Al, I don't know if you can offer that. This is this ain't your place to offer tea, is it? And that's where we'll end the episode. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> She's been here the whole time. <laughs> And with that, we bring today's chilling tale of loss and tragedy to a close. Thank you all for joining us on this journey into the abyss. And we hope you enjoyed this episode of Shadows of Prophecy. Join us next time for a lovely chat and a cuppa. 
A special thank you to our generous patrons, GCH, Crispy, and Maggie Z, whose unwavering support keeps the candles burning bright here at Goblin Forge. We'd also like to express our gratitude to Scrubcast for their exceptional sound mastering music and effects. They have been invaluable in bringing our story to life. And of course, a big thank you to our talented players, Kendrick, Russell, Chris, and Dan. We're thrilled to have you on board and can't wait to see where our adventures take us next. Our theme song, written by the talented electronic vapor soul artist Lusk, L-U-S-Q, sets the perfect tone for our podcast. Make sure to check out their latest album. Thank you, Audra, for Co Mo Rebi. This podcast is a Goblin Forge production. Follow us on Instagram at goblin underscore forge underscore TTRPG and join our Discord community. If you enjoy our podcast, consider becoming one of our fabulous patrons at patreon.com slash goblin underscore forge for free bonus content, including handouts and counter maps and adventure guides. Your support means the world to us. Lastly, please leave us a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. It helps us get the word out and share our stories with even more listeners. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time for another unforgettable performance from our talented cast. And to find out, what the fuck, Alice?